So hi, Chul. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we're here at the Applied AI Summit. So just to get us started, um, what did you want to be when you were a child? Were you always interested in technology or maths? Um, I was definitely very interested in math and science in general. But uh, funny enough, you know, my family you know, background is less about tech or like, you know, science is all about like social science political science and or uh not yeah nothing related to, to tech so i was actually interested in uh studying law okay uh as opposed to math or like uh, science so did you study law no actually but as i grew up i realized hey like i have a passion for math or science so that's actually you know i majored in math Mm -hmm. and then later on for my uh, grad studies I actually specialize in computer science. Okay amazing so how did you start your work in AI and applied AI was it through industry or academia? Pretty much academia um, so uh, as I mentioned in my talk so actually I started off with data mining mm -hmm. uh, because when I was you know back to uh, back to my grad uh, school it was all about data mining right yeah. because back at the time search engines uh, were booming so it was uh, all about data mining. Obviously, these days it's about you know AI and machine learning. So I started off with data mining research, and then slowly, uh, data mining research uh, community evolved uh, into uh, AI and machine learning, and that's how I ended up doing a lot of applying machine learning and AI. Okay, brilliant. Um, and so you're currently at Samsung Electronics. So how did you come to work there, and um, what does a typical day look like for you? So my typical day is okay. So. Uh, unfortunately, I'm I'm a manager, and then I'm actually <laughs> <laughs> right. It is what it is. So I'm actually managing a, a, a pretty big team. So I'm actually spending most of my time uh, with meetings. But once in a while, actually, I I contribute to research. I work with some uh, data scientists or research engineer so that we can really innovate uh, certain uh, areas of AI. Um, so that's how. It and works. so, what is it that your team are currently working on? So as you can imagine, Samsung. We as a big company. We have a lot of problems around that space. Uh, internal customers uh, at the global level so therefore like uh, we have to you know work with them and help them with data science uh, problems so that they can really excel in their you know functions right so that's one area the other half is more around building uh, some intelligent features uh, using our data uh, and then that's obviously like you know, uh, tons of like customer centric uh, AI development so that's what so I'm what are some of the main challenges that you're currently facing like in these areas and how are you using AI to right. overcome these so our company is actually very unique mm -hmm. because we are a heavily hardware-driven uh, company, yeah. as you might know. So uh, therefore, like uh, uh, when we are developing this type of AI technologies, right? So we have to make sure that uh, all these hardware uh, considerations are taken into effect, right? So meaning like, so this is a combination of service, software, and hardware, right? So many times, even though like uh, you have, you might have great algorithm that works. We have to make sure that this algorithm actually works on the device itself. Yeah, you know, making that happen is very, very challenging. So that's uh, one challenge I'm dealing with, you know, every day. And the other challenge is like obviously like data privacy. So at Samsung, we care a lot about the data privacy. So data privacy is definitely number one priority for us. So making sure that uh, your AI techniques uh, is not violating uh, any of data privacy issues is definitely challenging. Uh, so making sure that that trade-off is really achieved, so you have to, you know, do that. Uh, so definitely, I think privacy and security is something that so many people are concerned with at right. the moment, and you need to make sure that you align with what your consumers expect mm -hmm. as well. Um, so, what other industries do you think could benefit from the work that you're currently doing at the moment? Right. So I think like uh, uh, any company that is w working on uh, something that is. Uh, uh, hardware related or like uh, even manufacturing related I think it, they can benefit from us because again like uh, we we deal with you know tangible uh, assets right so making sure that like an you know, AI can be applied in that setting on the physical goods like uh, we have learned so much so probably like other industry can pick that up too and then some examples could be you know automobile industry or even like you know uh, CPG industry or uh, even some uh, device companies or chip companies, they can definitely like, benefit from what we are doing and uh, we can learn from them too. Definitely, yeah, and it's so important to share between different industries and industry and academia as well, otherwise all of this research is happening mm -hmm. but it's not being deployed in the real world. Um, so do you think that all businesses can, or well, all businesses and industries can benefit from applying AI or do you think there are some areas or industries that maybe should kind of step, take a step back and not be not be focusing on it so much uh, yeah I'm, I'm i don't think i'm i'm the best person to answer <laughs> that question because i think this is really like you know, a really you know 
mega question that big I think question, big yeah. question that like you know, that you know some people might you know have a better understanding of that. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, but I think like you know every industry should be benefit from from you know AI. I feel because AI at the end of the day it's all about automation, right? Yeah. Uh, and then making sure that uh, we can uh, provide tools so that people who are working in, on that industry can do better job, right? Uh, that's how we view a AI. Uh, so therefore, like, and I think AI can really benefit uh, every industry. Yeah. Uh, and so kind of more generally, taking a step back from your work at Samsung, um, what's something that you're particularly interested in in the AI space at the moment? Device AI. Yeah. So um, uh, it's something that we are you know, particularly interested in, making sure that certain algorithm that works in the cloud environment in general uh, works on, on the device itself. That's very challenging because yeah. we have to deal with like again memory constraint, battery constraint, um, you know power constraint, uh, and uh, chip constraint. So you have we have so many constraints. So making sure that your mega your magic stuff can work at the small scale that's very very challenging. And that's something that we are you know working very actively, and that's something that I'm very very interested in. Definitely, it does sound like a, a big challenge. Um, and so, what are some of the key resources that you'd recommend for anyone looking to get stuck into kind of like AI and applying AI to their businesses, maybe on a bit of a smaller scale? Right. Um, I think like, there are a lot of you know online materials available there these days. So therefore, like you know, obviously, like you know, uh, one should leverage those kind of online resources to pick up the most trending stuff. But at the same time, something that I'm actually noticing these days is that a lot of actually data science people, AI people are just, uh, you know, they want to learn things too quickly, right? Yeah. So I think that the best resource that they actually should rely on is actually reading, a, you know, a good book on machine learning on AI or like, you know, fundamentals of statistics so that they can really pick that up, uh, like, you know, from the, uh, from the foundation uh, perspective so that, like, you know, over time they can really, like, start building uh, techniques out of you know strong foundations uh, because take just taking online course and the claiming oh now like I know what I'm doing and therefore like I can solve any problem I don't think that's the really best uh, definitely you don't want approach. to be rushing into something before right. you have the foundations there um, so what's next for you in your work um, for my work uh, we're trying to figure out like you know, how to apply our AI in different horizons mm -hmm. right because as I mentioned before, like uh, we're definitely applying our AI techniques in different areas already. Yeah. Uh, but the question is, what else can we do, right, with the AI or machine learning techniques that we have developed? Yeah. So that's something that we are really like, you know, thinking very hard and then trying to figure out uh, with different stakeholders. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. It's been really interesting. Um, so where can people kind of keep up to date with your work? Have you got Twitter or have you got any publications online? Yeah, so I have a publication online. Uh, I'm also very active on LinkedIn, uh, okay, Juliana, because I used to work for LinkedIn. Okay, so, nice. so therefore, like I'm more kind of LinkedIn person, less on the on the Twitter yeah. person. So I'm active on LinkedIn. So probably people can follow me on LinkedIn. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your okay, day. Thank you so much.